Now let's get to ABC 7 News reporter Tara Campbell live in the newsroom with more on the latest in Kyiv and the families split apart by the warfare. Tara. Yeah, Karina, all eyes are on Kyiv. Families there split while some are forced into shelter, others taking up arms and all while loved ones here are left watching and waiting. A city under siege. Ukrainian soldiers bracing for more attacks on the capital. U.S. defense officials say Russian military forces are staging about 20 miles outside of Kyiv. While it's believed some of the forces are disoriented, taken back by the difficulty of the mission. Ukrainian President Zelensky standing his ground in central Kyiv. We know we are defending our country, our land, and our children's futures. Thousands of miles away, listening and watching, the Drodes family monitoring every moment from their home in Fremont. How could they just attack this beautiful gem of a city? Um, I, like, yeah, I was completely, I, I, we didn't believe that this would happen. Watching and wondering what's next. Yuri and his wife Alina with deep ties in the capital. It's very hard to see close friends, the friends that we grew up with, the families. As Yuri said, we have parents of our friends, um, too many people that are close to our hearts. Yuri's sister and her family are hunkered down in a nearby suburb of Kiev. It's my country. I just uh, feel that uh, it's where I should be. Despite the danger, she says there's no way she's leaving her home. We have um, uh, an airfield uh, nearby. The things are happening really close. And it got even closer. Just hours after we spoke, Russian forces attacked a town less than a mile away. I immediately uh, Skyped her and uh, she picked up, said, yep, yeah, uh, we're alive. Uh, the, her three-year-old daughter was woken up by the blasts. Yuri, careful not to upset his father and mother. They're visiting from Kyiv and don't know when they'll get back. And I kind of did it like, behind my parents so that they don't get nervous right away. Um, and then I came out and said, okay, you will be reading that Levaha was attacked. And like, I just want to say that Alona is fine. His father, resolute yet shaken. She's now very close to the, this military, these places where they're fighting. A family hurting, but holding on to hope and pride in their people. Trying to defend the city as much as they can. And they are successful. Like, so... So uh, uh, we see like a, a little bit of hope, I think, right? I think so. Now, those still in Kyiv are being urged to stay indoors. They're under curfew until Monday. And for those who are trying to flee the country, it's a long journey, taking up to 40 hours just to work through massive traffic jams. In the newsroom, Tara Campbell, ABC7 News. Thank you, Tara. Our thoughts are with that family and many others. And San Francisco landmarks tonight are illuminated in the colors of the Ukrainian flag from the very top of the Salesforce Tower, the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium and City Hall. Our Bay Area institutions are making it clear who they're thinking of this evening. Today was marked with protests and rallies and at every one of them, a call to action to help the Ukrainian people. I call on all the Russians, Belarusians today, do not stand idle. Your time is not at the rallies. We Ukrainians can talk to media. We can organize the rallies. You should be calling on people at home so they are not silent. That deeply emotional plea coming from a Ukrainian American at a rally at the foot of the Market Street in San Francisco earlier today. Hundreds gathered to show their support for Ukraine and condemn the actions of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Many Ukrainians are also asking not just for a show of support, but for concrete actions from international governments. Several nations today impose the biggest sanction on Russia so far, impacting its banks. ABC 7 News reporter Ryan Curry spoke with experts about their take on whether it's enough. 
Ukrainians uh, are very brave, and the Ukrainian army is very brave. Natalia Hoshalik is waking up every day fearing for family members. She is a Fulbright scholar at UC Berkeley and is visiting from Ukraine. She says Russian troops have moved into her family's town. They are at shelters, they are hiding in their basements, and they are trying to uh, find like a safe place to spend the night. It leaves her hoping other countries support Ukraine. I think like every country should ask uh, themselves, is there anything else I can do, we can do? So far, other countries have only implemented sanctions, trying to deter Russia from continuing its attack. But some scholars here think that is not going to be enough to stop the ongoing invasion. In the short run, uh, the effects are going to be minimal. You really need to scale them up to inflict pain. Yuri Gorodnyshenko is from Ukraine and currently is an economics professor at UC Berkeley. He thinks the sanctions won't stop Russian troops. Just imagine your bank calls you and says, we're going to cancel your credit card. That's inconvenient, but is it going to change your behavior in a fundamental way? No, really. The biggest sanctions so far came Saturday. The U.S. and other countries, mostly in Europe, disconnected some Russian banks from the international financial system known as SWIFT. SWIFT allows banks from around the world to send money to each other. Koronyshenko says banning Russia from this could ultimately affect how Russia funds the war. Removing Russia from SWIFT is, is, is the move in the right direction. It, we should not use the international financial system to fund war. He says it is a long-term plan, but not one that will immediately stop the fighting. He fears Russia will continue invading Ukraine and potentially other nations. This is a battlefront now in Ukraine, but it will be moving to other countries. Ryan Curry, ABC7 News.